Next on Startup, we head to Bloomfield Hills, Michigan to talk to the James sisters who founded Drought Juice. Then we head over to Wallingford, Connecticut to talk to Denisha, the owner of Plucked Admissions. All of this and more is next on Startup. There is nothing easy about starting a small business. A Baker's Tale, all natural and gluten-free cookies, tarts, pies, and cakes online. A Baker's Tale is proud to support Startup and all of the entrepreneurs out there trying to sweeten their own story of success. The American small business was built on one thing, relationships. And every time a customer walks through the door, a new one begins. Pay Anywhere was built to help entrepreneurs do what they do best. So keep loving what you do. Just get paid for it. Pay Anywhere. The Michigan Economic Development Corporation is proud to support Startup and all the dreamers, thinkers, and doers. Pure Michigan, ready for the next big thing. You've written your own story of success, and it shows. Chrysler is proud to support Startup and all the people out there who define their own success. My name is Gary Rado, and I'm a documentary filmmaker and an entrepreneur. The economy is in less than perfect shape, and when the jobs go away, there's nothing left to do but get up and get creative. And there are people all over America doing just that. It's estimated that up to 85% of new businesses fail, so I'm going coast to coast to hear the personal stories of the people who beat the odds and started a successful business from the ground up. This is Startup. I'm on West Maple in Bloomfield Hills, Michigan, and I'm gonna go talk to the James sisters who created Drought Juice, a company that produces organic, raw, cold pressed juice. Let's go hear their story. Organic foods are produced without the use of synthetic pesticides, fertilizers, GMOs, or ionizing radiation. Only 2% of the food supply in the U.S. is grown using organic methods, which has led to major health problems among the U.S. population. The James sisters have always had a passion for making their own fresh organic juice. But once they put their product out into the market, they've been able to grow their company at an exceptional rate. My name is Caitlin James. I am a co-founder and CEO of Drought. And Drought is a healthy lifestyle company that specializes in organic raw juices. So how did, how did this idea come up? Were you part of the inception? At what point in your life were you? Like, it can paint, kind, of, kind of walk me through the steps. Yeah, so um, in, back in 2010, I had just returned back to the States. I was a Peace Corps volunteer in Jordan, and I had returned home um, and moved to New York to go to grad school. Um, my sister Jessie had been living in New York doing hair and she and I, um, shortly after moving out there, we kind of got together and we were a little disenchanted with, with those decisions and we were waiting in line at um, a very tiny juice bar and Jessie was being really cynical talking about how there was a drought of anything cool, um, which in New York City is, is hilarious. And I was like, you know, this is ridiculous, we've been in this line for 20 minutes. And you know you go back home and you can't find something like this anywhere. So um, I suggested, why don't you know? Why wouldn't we just start a juice bar and let's call it Drought? So was it uh, kind of a hard sell to get everybody on board? It doesn't seem like it. Were they all like, oh, I, I'm miserable too. Let's do, let's do it. No, you know it's it's we didn't have an extremely concrete idea behind it. So there was very little risk in just coming on board with the idea. Yeah. We were like, hey, do you want to start a business? Yeah, let's do it. It's a several year overnight success story because we started <laughs> yeah. working on it almost five years ago and sure. we're at this point now. Detroit is ranked number eight for the top 10 cities in America for the most women owned businesses. It's also said that women entrepreneurs nationally employ over 19 million workers. So my name is Jesse James, uh, one of the co-founders of Drought. Um, and my job is solely to run production and uh, be in charge of the sanitation program. So to ensure that we're sending out a safe product, nice. making sure everything tastes good and looks good and is safe. What was so, step one? Like when did you decide, all right, let's leave New York, let's go back to Michigan. Why Ferndale, are you from the area? Well, so we actually started in, in downtown Plymouth, Michigan. Oh, okay. Um, and the reason being is my parents live there. 
and uh, we didn't have much money to, you know, live on our own, yeah. take care of ourselves, and start a business. So, you so moved we back all in. so we all moved back in with my parents. Oh my um, Were they thrilled or what? No. Uh, <laughs> they had to I be think super... they I think they thought that they did something terribly wrong. You worked uh, so hard to get the kids out of the house yeah. so that all four come back? Exactly. So we found an old flood shop in downtown Plymouth um, and we converted it into our first production space. Bought a few tabletop juicers uh, with some money we raised from a Kickstarter campaign. And then from there, we just started working. So you said a Kickstarter. Had to, I mean, what did you raise? Was it enough to, to fund the business? We raised about $13,000. Okay. Uh, that was just enough to get us some tabletop cold press juicers and to pay our, our first month security deposit rent. Yeah, but that's uh, it. Yep, yeah, that was it. And so from there, we just had to make sure that we worked our tails off to, to get it up and running. No and loans, nothing, mom and dad, friends, family. Nope, $13,000 and and a dream. And a dream. My name is Jenny James. I am the youngest of the family members, but one of the four sisters involved. Um, I do, I manage production with my sister Jessie. So I kind of make sure that all of our raw materials are here. Do they just magically appear? Oh no. <laughs> How do you source you know they don't. <laughs> grades like that? <laughs> yes. Well, we go through, I mean, on any given day, we go through about 1,500 pounds of produce. Okay. So there is a lot of planning. There's a lot of relationship building. 1,500 pounds. Yeah. Wow. Did, yeah. So about 70% of our produce during this season is local. We've worked, and me specifically, for the last three years, really developing relationships with a few farmers and, you know, really kind of get into the Michigan farming community more than we have in the past. Are you the one that actually builds and establishes, maintains those relationships with the farmer? Yes, I am. All right, so, so how did you end up with this with this role? Is this kind of just everyone, I all ask the my, sisters sat I down? I ask myself like, that all the time. You, you drew straws or what, what happened? I think our natural talents just kind of presented themselves, honestly. Uh, I had never done any produce buying or any sourcing before. I was an art history major and I'm using makes sense. my degree to its fullest. Um, Obviously. Yeah, no, but it was, it's, I think we just all had a knack for healthy food and kind of creating a product that we knew that we could back up. Just I don't, fell in naturally. I don't, mind, I don't mind doing something that I'm not familiar with because I believe in the whole, the holistic view of what drought is supposed to be. Okay, so, so what do people think of the product? Uh, hands down, without, without question, uh, drought and, and the juice that they make is, uh, I've, never, I've never seen customers react the way they do. It's met with a lot of suspicion at first, and then you have the juice and you're, you're oh, I, I get it, of you're course, hooked. you're hooked. My name is Julie James, I'm one of the co-founders of Drought, and my role on a regular basis has to do with branding, marketing, and then also um, HR, managing employees. So, a little bit of everything. You make this great juice, but obviously you have inventory, you have product that you need to sell. How do you get the word out? Um, well, and, so, and, and the second part of that, how competitive is the juice market? Well, when we started, we were the first uh, raw juice company in Michigan and pretty much the Midwest in terms of a, um, you know, like a packaged product. There was nobody else doing it. And so we, it was a good thing for us, but it was also a challenge because we had to educate everybody. You're introducing a new product Absolutely. into the market. We had yeah. people coming in and going, I can buy juice for $2 or for $1.50 at the gas station. Why would I spend $10 on it? Right. So we, just by virtue of the fact that we had to educate everyone, that kind of snowballed into um, you know, our marketing and really telling the story. And you know, we do have a unique story that we are a family that started it, that we're four sisters. Um, and that we were kind of creating a new product from scratch. So did you do a press release and, and originally just kind of blanket the, the area, the local area, no, region? No, I mean, the startup was actually so involved that we didn't really have time to. Um, social media really helped. We yeah. started a Facebook page and we started Instagram and um, we put bottles in the hands of all of our friends and family and said, hey, drink this, tell people what it is and right. whatnot. So, um, it just kind of, it was very organic. So this no day, paid marketing, no paid advertising. None. To this day, I don't know if we've paid for advertising yet. Green juice is rich in chlorophyll, which helps the body detoxify and circulate oxygen. It also balances the body's pH by reducing acidity. Low-grade acidosis can zap energy and contribute to many health problems, such as kidney stones. What is it like working with siblings? 
I think in the event that we weren't so different, it probably wouldn't be as pleasant. Um, but we all have strengths and weaknesses and it really balances it out. You can kind of cut through the nonsense and get the work done without worrying about hurting people's feelings. <laughs> Has it affected your personal relationship? I mean, because all you talk about is work, I'm sure, right? Yeah, I mean, we, at, at different points, everyone has to say, hey, we're going to meet up and this is not work related. And we have to be specific about it. Um, but we've, we've gotten pretty good at, at scheduling, you know, work time and personal time and yeah. being respectful of, of what everyone wants. And, and it's getting easier. What was the, the biggest obstacle, hardship that you've had to overcome throughout this process? Money, where do we find money and, and how do we get Are you making a living? Uh, I'm paying my bills. Okay. <laughs> we're, okay. we're paying our bills, but right. you know, uh, but we can see the, the light at the end of the tunnel and I think yeah. that's important. For, for other entrepreneurs out there, not only food industry, but, but any industry, uh, what advice would you have for them? If you are going to run a small business and be an entrepreneur, I think that you have to give 150% yep. every single day and you'll start to see results. You, know, you can always find all the reasons not to do something, sure. um, not having money, not having resources, um, but you really just need to find something that you love and, and follow through with it. So are you happy? Absolutely, yeah. You, you made the right choice. Yeah, I mean it's, you know, our intention it's was always to have, you know, to be able to maintain individuality and autonomy in, you know, our work and our relationships and our personal lives and owning your own business, while it takes lots of effort and lots of time, really, really allows you to do that. There are a million ways to start a business, but how did the James sisters do it? Let's find out. They started with zero dollars in the bank and their first year sales were around 20,000 operating at a loss. They spent $15,000 to open the business that they acquired through a Kickstarter campaign. And the one word that they would use to describe what it really takes to make it in business is work. Usually the best ideas happen organically or without any effort at all. But executing that idea takes raw determination and the ability to press on regardless of obstacles. Looks like the James sisters have put a lot more than just lightning in their bottle. For more information, log on to our website and click the link for drought. I'm on Center Street in Wallingford, Connecticut. And I'm going to go talk to Denisha, the owner of Plucked Admissions, a company that helps students apply to colleges and universities for practically free. Let's go hear her story. With more and more students hoping to further their education after high school, finding the right college can be tricky. And even after being accepted, 80% of students change their major within their first year of college. When Denisha experienced the high cost of applying to colleges herself, she decided to start a business to help students not only find the right school, but also make it affordable for them to submit applications. Hi, my name is Denisha Kulor and I'm the founder of Pluck. Our mission is a student for every school and a school for every student. All right, so how do you know Denisha? I taught Denisha in high school. Actually, she was in my AP Lit class. Here. Seems like a total underachiever. Right? She is, and she always has been. Yeah, yeah just <laughs> no, no drive, no drive whatsoever. Sure, sure. Actually, it's a funny story about that because I, I can say after 15 years of teaching, and I taught in New York and Connecticut, that I have only once had a student come in and explain that they couldn't do their homework because they were up all night writing for the Huffington Post, <laughs> and that's Denisha. So do you, do you fit in with other 18-year-olds? Yeah, it, it's funny. Um, I love my friends. I do find, though, that sometimes I don't understand the problems I have. Like, like I might be upset yeah. about something, and they're just like, OK, like, good luck with that. <laughs> so, so if you were to give me like an elevator pitch of what Plucked Admissions is, what is that? Sure, um, Plucked is a web application that helps colleges meet their enrollment goals as students apply for free. You're, you're just doing a blanket of a ton of applications. 
and then you can choose out of the ones that accept you. Mm, so the first thing students do is they create an application. So you fill out your application very similar to any regular college application and then you can sort of have a little fun with um, criteria. So that's when you get to think about what you really want in a school, states, um, extracurricular activities, majors. And then from criteria, that's when we present you with um, schools that we think would be a good fit. We're never going to really give you a school where it's a major, major reach or it's, it doesn't make sense for your criteria. If you don't want to go to school in New York, we're not going to give you a school in New York. So like we, You plug in your GPA, it's like 2.1, no extracurriculars, <laughs> but I want to I apply to Harvard. Exactly. We're not, we're not going to do that to you. We, t we really want to match um, students and schools with, with Target. So we want it to be you're getting this list of schools that really is a good fit for you all around. How did it start and where did you say, you know what, I think this could help other people too? I didn't know what I wanted to do, so I applied to um, as many schools as possible so I'd have options. Okay. And that's sort of how Plucked came about. So you don't want to spend 60 or $70 to a school that you don't know you might get into. Or even if, um, you, if your parents give you $200 and you can only apply to three schools, you're not going to apply to a school you think they might not let you go in the first place or you just might not get into. Connecticut has always been an innovative state. It's the home of the first hamburger, Polaroid camera, the helicopter, and the color television. What did they cost to get this up and running and where did you run the business out of in the beginning? I graduated high school and my grandma gave me two thousand dollars as a graduation present so I, I think I got like a Werther's original and ten bucks from my grandma. <laughs> yeah no I was definitely shocked so um, I used that money to buy a, a laptop yeah. and then um, I used the other thousand dollars for a video for a crowdfunding campaign and that video allowed me to make another five thousand mm dollars -hmm. and then I started operating out of the hubcap so the space we're in now and they provided me with an office and conference space and just it made me feel very legitimate as I was still um, working working things out. Okay, so tell us who you are and your relationship to Denisha. Sure, uh, my name is Sal Menzo. I'm the superintendent of Wallingford Public Schools. Uh, Denisha lives in Wallingford. She has participated in Hubcap Wallingford, which is a business incubator site for young entrepreneurs. Tell me a little bit about her character and your relationship or encounters with her. She is just an incredible young lady who has amazing maturity, has amazing capacity to see a problem and solve a problem, which is so difficult to get in you know, younger students and our population, and especially in high school. And for a lot of young people, they, in order to kind of lead by example, a lot of time that, ex that example needs to be closer to their age. Correct. Instead of, okay, I'm going to follow in the footsteps of this 40 or 50 year old person, she's setting an example from, for younger people, by younger people. Exactly. So how did you actually start the business? You have your five grand from your fundraising campaign. But how did you turn into a business itself? Sure. Spent about $1,000 on LLC formation. Mm -hmm. And then it was time for the um, web application. So now I'm at $4,000, and web development firms are quoting me $100,000. That was the minimum. So I was just like, you're going to have to do a lot of crowdfunding campaigns to, yeah. to get that money. And Which on like a 40-year payment plan. Exactly. <laughs> And so, um, thankfully, I was able to find a great freelancer that did quality work at a fraction of the price. And that gave me the um, first MVP that I needed to have a functional product and then to, to keep going. Did you approach colleges next, or do you go to the students? I started to approach colleges and to explain to them um, how Plucked could help and how it could affect their enrollment, as well as um, the benefits it could have on the students attending their institution. Right. And then now that we have colleges on board, it's um, a lot easier to approach students because who doesn't love free college applications? How does this business make money? We work on a one-year subscription from schools based on the amount of undergraduate students at their schools. And we charge them a fee to use the service and get these great applications from students. Can you give me a, a rough range, what, it, what, it, what you charge a college? Sure. So um, our range is from $10,000 to $50,000. For one? Yes. That's awesome. And you've been able to sell this to multiple. Yeah, yeah. We're definitely selling to multiple schools. Um, this is a real business, by the way. <laughs> being a, um, being wow. so new, we are giving discounts, but 
We're definitely on our way to major profitability very soon. A 2014 Pew Research report looked at earnings of millennials who worked full-time in 2012. Among the group, workers with at least a bachelor's degree had earnings of 45,500, much higher than those with only some college at 30,000 or a high school diploma at 28,000. What do you see for the future? For Plucked, first of all, I don't see any limits to us. I think we're gonna continue to grow. I think colleges are gonna sort of see our vision for where we wanna go and get on board. Yeah, it's a, it's a win-win for everybody involved. Who doesn't want a free college application? Right. I mean, I think college applications are just really an unfair um, sort of boundary that prevent a lot of kids from entering college. Like, I spent almost $600 when I was applying to schools only to come down to my choice of two. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that was that. But I feel like the more options you have, the more acceptance letters you have in your mailbox, yeah. you know, you can look at the different financial aid packages, the different tuitions, different locations. And what Plucked really does is it, it opens up a whole Even world Even the of playing field? Yeah, exactly. Because people of uh, lower socioeconomic status probably wouldn't have $600 to spend on a college application. Exactly. And I personally am from that bracket, so I mean, I didn't have that money. And yeah. I, I definitely wish I would have spent it more wisely, but... Um, Stealing hubcap pays off. <laughs> what has been the hardest thing that you've had to overcome from day one, from the conception of this to now? Um, I think being taken seriously. I think everybody likes to say at first, oh, you know, you're young. it's cool. Yeah, but it's really hard, especially demanding um, the money sometimes to, for people to take you seriously and to see yeah. value and to see value in your product and what you're How doing. How do you overcome that? Um, just by knowing my stuff. People are just shocked about the sheer amount of information I know about their institution and um, how we can help them solve their, if I'm telling you all your problems at your institution I, and how to solve them, I think. It's You're almost coming to. in as like a consultant. Yeah, yeah, I like to look at, at it that way because um, I don't think you're gonna get such candid advice from a student who was just in the process and who can actually tell you what it takes to interest a student to get them to attend your institution. What advice would you have for other entrepreneurs out there, especially young entrepreneurs, people in high school that have a dream, thinking the same thing, oh, they're not gonna take it seriously because I'm young. What advice do you have for them? Um, I think the biggest thing is to just get started. Momentum will push you forward for all the tough things you're going through. So even just getting started, the momentum and excitement you have from starting something will hopefully keep you going through all the tough times. A lot of people say it and it sounds cliche, but it really is true. If you don't give up the way I see it, eventually, like people Something's are gonna, gonna yeah, happen. Yeah, exactly. Or the idea is gonna completely bomb and you walk away and start something else, Exactly, right? so eventually something will work out in your favor. Well, thank you so much for talking to us. It's an yeah. uh, inspiring, uh, inspiring story regardless of age. Aw, thank so you so thank much. So thank you so much, I appreciate it. I really appreciate it, thank you for having me. There are a million ways to start a business, but how did Denisha do it? Let's find out. She had a credit score of around 780 and started with $2,000 in the bank. She spent a total of 9,000 to open the business that she received from a crowdfunding campaign. The business is already profitable, and the one word she would use to describe what it takes to make it in business is perseverance. In order to start a business, you have to really apply yourself and become a student of your craft. And if you properly test your business model in the market, you could end up with an A-plus business. For more information, log on to our website and click the link for Plucked Admissions. If you look at the people who got money in Shark Tank, here are the three things they did, 100% of the time, always the same. They were able to explain their vision or their business or their opportunity in 90 seconds or less. Simple, easy to understand, very obvious what the opportunity is. That's number one. Number two, usually the teams are able to articulate in five minutes or less why were they, they were the right team to actually execute the business plan. What they knew about the business that made you confident that that was the team that could actually do it. Now here's the, the third thing that was always present and the killer. They knew their numbers. You've got to know your numbers because all the confidence you get from the first two points, being able to articulate the idea, explain why you're the right person to do it, 
goes out the window when you don't know your numbers. The blood of business is numbers. If you don't know them, you have no blood. You're dead. Next time on Startup, we head to Montpelier, Vermont to talk to Sarah, the owner of Bailey Road. Then we head over to Concord, New Hampshire to talk to Chris and Scott, the owners of Double Midnight Comics. Be sure to join us next time on Startup. And then, uh, what, what is it you do for a living? Uh, I play uh, professional football for the Detroit Lions. Okay, this is the, this is the big question. Mm -hmm. Super Bowl is here? Yeah. Come on, please. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Please, I'm begging. It's been up. <laughs>